One of the most important decisions that you're going to make as a new business owner is what type of legal entity you want to form for your business. Now, most entrepreneurs know about corporations and they want to form corporations because they understand that they limit liability meaning that your personal assets are protected against the debts and liabilities of your business. But what most entrepreneurs don't know is that corporations are subject to something called double taxation. Double taxation occurs because corporations are treated as a separate person for tax purposes. That means when your corporation makes profits and they pass into your business, they're going to be taxed at the corporate rate. Then when you pay yourself as an owner in dividends, those funds are taxed again on your personal income. So in order to avoid double taxation, a lot of new business owners choose to make instead a limited liability company or an LLC. A limited liability company is not subject to double taxation. Instead, they have something called pass-through taxation, which like the name implies, means that the profits of your business and the losses pass through the LLC and are reported directly on your personal income taxes. There is an extra benefit to that because if your new business operates at a loss in its first few years, you can actually report those losses on your personal income tax as deductions to your income. Surprise! You made it to your first Melly moment. These are times in the modules that I'm gonna to take to just talk to you guys candidly about real life experiences, real stories about people who have done what you're hoping to do now. So you're about one minute in, you're already getting tons of information. So if you're still with it and you're taking your notes and you're ready to get to the end of this module, pat yourself on the back. You are awesome. I wanna talk about what does it really take for a business to succeed? I've seen a lot in my years working with entrepreneurs. And I've noticed the one major difference between entrepreneurs that succeed and the ones that don't, you're gonna like this, perseverance. There's a quote from Rockefeller that says, perseverance overcomes even nature. And I think that there's a lot of truth to that. When people are dedicated and determined to achieve their goal and they push through obstacles, they do succeed. The irony is that oftentimes when people experience failure or disappointments or things don't go exactly as they planned or on their timeline, they give up. They give up trying. And the craziest thing is that oftentimes success is one step away from when people give up. So I want to tell you the story about the little cafe in Long Beach. This is a client that I worked with years ago who had started a cafe and had incorporated, had gotten into business with their husband. They had done their bylaws. They had gotten investors. They had taken on significant funds and they were ready to launch their dreams. They signed a lease. They had a space for their cafe. And when it finally came time to really get to the nitty gritty, they realized that the lease that they had signed, the kitchen didn't work. The plumbing didn't work. It was basically a space that had no capacity to actually be turned into a cafe. And they lost their chance. They lost the money that the investors had given them because they had sunken it into an idea that didn't pan out. It wasn't that they weren't capable. It wasn't that they weren't competent. It wasn't that they didn't have the capacity to run a successful cafe, but an obstacle came up, something that they couldn't have foreseen. Maybe you could argue with a little more due diligence, they could have realized it, but it was hard to tell from the outside that the kitchen wasn't gonna work. Flash forward a couple years later, and this is when I meet them and I hear their story. And I think to myself, okay, so you're launching this cafe again. And they said, yes, they had spent the next two years working and paying back their investors, the money that was lost on the business. And in spite of that, they never lost hope and they never lost that idea, but this is what they were going to do. They were going to open their cafe in Long Beach, no matter what it took, or how long it took, or the effort they had to put in. Well, when they came to me to create a limited liability company to now try to reopen their cafe, they still had not gotten new investors. They decided to reach out to those investors that they had originally, originally lost the money. They reinvested in the idea because they trusted them, because they knew how hard they had worked and because they knew that those people were gonna persevere. Now, They've been running a successful cafe for several years. They welcomed their first daughter 
and they've realized their dream because they didn't give up. So I'm gonna leave you with this first melee moment with a little poem that I think is pretty powerful. I've shortened it up a bit, but the message will come across. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win, but you think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, the one that wins is the one who thinks he can. There's also the benefit in forming an LLC that the maintenance is not as complicated and has less administrative costs. A corporation requires holding annual board and shareholder meetings, as well as keeping minutes of those meetings. Even if you're the sole owner of your corporation and you are the CEO and the only board member and the only shareholder, you still need to hold these meetings and keep these minutes in order to actually preserve the benefits of having limited liability. The risk that you run if you fail to do this as a corporate owner is that if your company is sued, you can actually have the corporate veil pierced by a judge, meaning that your personal assets can be reached in spite of the fact that you have a corporation because you weren't actually keeping up with the required formalities. So because of avoiding double taxation, and because of the easier maintenance requirements for a limited liability company, that's one of the most popular legal entities that's formed by new business owners. So let's talk about how you form a limited liability company and what it is. A California LLC is a legal entity that combines both the corporate characteristics of limited liability, protecting your personal assets against the debts and liabilities of your business, with the general flexibility and pass-through tax treatment of a partnership. That means the profits and losses of your business are passed through to you. Now, an LLC is formed by executing and submitting what's called the Articles of Organization. Nowadays, the Articles of Organization are filed online at the California Secretary of State's website. It's gonna ask you information like your business name, your business address, and the name of your members. Keep in mind, it is a $70 filing fee. The owners of an LLC are called members. Most new LLCs that are formed are member managed, meaning that the members or owners are also the ones that are managing the day-to-day -day operations of the business. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can actually have a limited liability company with members that are passive investors. They own equity in your limited liability company, but they actually don't do any of the management or day-to-day -day operations of the company. In fact, the California Corporate Code provides great flexibility in the way that you structure your LLC. For example, how management is structured, the rights of the members, how you're gonna allocate and distribute the profits and losses, meaning what percentage ownership each of the members is gonna have, the transferability of membership, meaning who can sell their equity interest for what price and when, are all controlled by something called your LLC's operating agreement. The operating agreement is an important legal document for your limited liability company. It's basically the internal rules and the handbook that you're going to follow when running your limited liability company. So you want to make sure when you draft your operating agreement that you're very careful and pay attention to details. In fact, most new business owners choose to have an attorney draft the operating agreement for them. Now, a corporation is also formed by filing with the Secretary of State, but that document is called the Articles of Incorporation. The Articles of Incorporation are also filed online with the Secretary of State. It's going to ask for information like the name of your corporation, the number of authorized shares, as well as your business address. This form is $100 for filing. There are also several different kinds of corporations. A general stock corporation, professional corporations, foreign corporations, even nonprofits are a type of corporation. After you form a corporation, your entity is automatically classified as a C corporation, meaning your tax at the corporate rate, that whole double taxation that we talked about earlier. That's the automatic classification for a corporation. But there actually is a twist to forming a corporation, something called the S corporation. An S corporation actually takes pass-through taxation while still existing in the corporate form. So, to become an S-Corporation, after you form the corporation, you have to file an extra document called an S-Election form with the IRS. The election has the effect of making the corporation a pass-through entity, like a partnership or an LLC, for federal and California tax purposes, 
but it doesn't change the nature of the entity as a corporation. This means even if you elect to have an S corporation, you still have to do things like creating bylaws, holding annual director and shareholder meetings, and keeping the minutes in order to preserve the benefits of incorporating. In the next module, we're going to go into detail about all those formalities that are required when you form a corporation. So now that you know about LLCs and you know about S corporations, you might be asking yourself, why would somebody form a C corporation? <laughs> well, there are actually a lot of reasons that you'd want to form a C corporation. One of the biggest ones is that with a C corporation, if you know that you're going to be reinvesting a lot of the profits that you make in your business right back into your business, then a C corporation allows you to do that without paying personal income taxes on those profits. Since they're staying in your business and they're not automatically passing through to you, you don't have to pay personal income tax on that. Another benefit is that if you see yourself actually selling stock and seeking out investors, a C corporation is one of the best vehicles for expanding your business through investors. There's also a lot of limits to being able to qualify as an S corporation. For an S corporation, shareholders all have to be US citizens, for example. Also, you can't have more than 100 shareholders, which might not be a big problem for a small business owner. Another thing is that an S corporation does not allow you to have an LLC or another corporation or a partnership as a shareholder. And finally, one of the ones that I think is really the most important is that an S corporation only allows you to have one class of stock. You cannot have multiple classes of stock in an S corporation, which I think can become relevant even for small business owners who may want one class of stock for the founders of the company while having a different kind of stock for passive investors.